if there is a suffering in some part of the world, this is a part of you a suffering. When, when we're told to love, love your neighbor as yourself, it doesn't tell me to love my neighbor only if he's Christian. When they ask me if I believe in peace, I answer, well, I believe in God. In Hebrew, it is the same. Unless we are willing to listen to the voice of uh, religion as a part of reality, I think that we will never be able to cope with those conflicts. If we stand side by side, a Catholic, a, 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 an Anglican, the, the Orthodox, the Muslim, the Hindu, the Buddhist, side by side, preaching one thing, our followers will follow it. In the aftermath of World War II, religious leaders began re-examining their role in the peace process. Tensions during the Cold War years rendered their talks even more urgent. For it seemed clear that in an atomic age, the world would either embrace values which unite all faiths, or there might be no world at all. All of the genocides of the 20th century were not at all motivated by religion. They were motivated by political ideologies that killed millions of people in holocausts, genocides, killing fields, and so on. In the Christian tradition, we are used to talk about the, the mystery of goodness, but I think we should also speak about the mystery of evil. Evil is uh, not only a notion, it is a reality, and it is a dimension with our human existence. By 1970, the movement of religious agents for peace had grown large enough to merit a conference in Kyoto with representatives from 39 countries. The focus of these talks and those at subsequent world assemblies was not religious doctrine, but the contributions religious communities can make together to areas of shared human concern. They were the leaders of all the religions in the world, gathered together, speaking the same language of seeking peace. Eden. Peace. Peace. Shanti. Jing Su. Alafia Laria Orilede. Hewa wo oinorishimasu. Bika Shri. Pe. From these assemblies emerged a vision of religions working together as a global family to share resources and establish in unity an approach to peace that no one religion could do on its own. When the idea came up, I was convinced and I said this is the right time to cooperate and I try to focus on common problems facing our communities. Our followers were sometimes having clashes over minor issues which we could solve. Because each religion in each country has got the structures through which they pass their information down to the grassroots level. I got some people who were not happy with that idea, but I told them this is not a matter of faith. We are not converting we are not changing religion. We are looking at common problems that are facing our, our, our communities. In the fields of knowledge, fields of health, fields of conflict, war, uh, HIV, AIDS, these areas, they do not have borders. I told them, here we must uh, cooperate. And they picked up the idea. Because we are now accessing aid from the Global Fund, from USAID, other uh, donor community coming to support the uh, Interreligious Council of Uganda. And uh, as a body, when we come together, I think we shall do a lot. We 
can't isolate ourselves as Africans from this global village. Because whatever happens in one part of this global village has an effect in another part of the village. So we, we have no choice except to work together. <laughs> Religious institutions, in addition to being a moral compass for the community, can also be a coalescing force for the community. When you look at the conflicts around the world, it is children who are often the innocent victims, children who are on the streets begging for money, kidnapped and put into wars as child soldiers, children who don't have health care, their children who are out of school, and religious institutions can play a key role so that they will have a future. When I heard about this Religions for Peace, the idea intrigued me. Here, I saw that religions could be used for constructive purposes, for bringing about peace. And then the more I thought about it, one realizes that religions are at the grassroots they are all over the world. They reach people where nobody else can. Once religious communities get together, Religions for Peace shares with them the experience of building and equipping an interreligious council and introduces them to sister councils around the world. For more than 30 years, this growing family of religious affiliates has achieved detente and disarmament in areas of armed conflict, relief in areas of poverty, change of policy where local populations are at risk, and justice where human rights were violated. What I think is the power of the, of the uh, principle uh, in WCRP that you come with your religious faith intact. You do not leave it at the door. You bring it, but in a spirit of utter mutual respect. When you come to Religion for Peace, this is a, a, a place for everyone who are coming here to look at themselves and re-examine their own practice, their own teaching, their own uh, uh, ways of being on earth. In my own faith journey, moved from a very sort of protective, uh, narrow interpretation of what faith is about to a situation where I am created to uh, not only love uh, my neighbor, but to even to love my enemy. Religions for Peace seeds the development of interreligious councils that then grow into independent bodies operating according to their particular needs and their own collective decisions. What specifically can religion do? Great difference between growing between the Sunni and the Shia. What sort of help should we be giving you in your efforts um, and the interfaith? There are now more than 70 national and regional councils and groups throughout Asia, Europe, and Africa, often working in the most difficult circumstances imaginable. These religious leaders of the world are the spiritual directors of all our politicians in the world. So I thought this would be the most influencing organ to the politicians of the world, especially those who are fostering violence and wars. Let these people come out of the bush. We are ready to embrace them. We are ready to forgive them. Let them come so that we can build Sierra Leone. One peace, one peace, no left of faith, one peace. So there's a wake-up call. And today, with globalization, there's a greater danger of moving backwards faster than ever. 
and that needs to be stopped. By 2010, Religions for Peace will have established affiliates in more than 100 nations, the largest agency of religious peacemakers in the world. We have only one request in Religions for Peace. Share your experience with your brothers and sisters so that they too can learn from what you've been able to do. Every one of us who have come here is an agent for peace and we have the responsibility but also the gift and the calling to be peacemaker. God will call you his child. Blessed be you who make peace.